What up, family? It's your boy King Overtuna, back again with another episode. Uh, so I have finally reached Camp Paula. Uh, I just checked into my little hotel room. I got something quick, uh, some cheap hotel rooms, nothing really extravagant about it. Uh, it's right over by my old neighborhood. I knew where it was. Um, only because the hotel I was going to book with, they are full. They told me that they weren't, and I made a reservation, but turns out they were full. So, yes, that's neither here nor there. I'm just excited to be back in Uganda. I'm excited to be back home <laughs> for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yo, I'm about to hit these streets, y'all, and uh, I got stuff to do. But yeah, I'm extremely, extremely, extremely excited to be back to Uji. So, this is uh, the view from my balcony. Yeah, family. Um, I'm gonna have some great content coming up uh, pretty soon. You guys just be on standby. And uh, this is gonna be one of many. So this is day one. I just got here, it's like nine o'clock in the morning. And um, I'm about to hit the streets, y'all. I'm gonna talk to y'all later. Peace. What's up everybody, I'm King Obatunda, and I'm back again with another episode. But I'm back again in Uganda, I'm here in uh, Camp Paula, as you guys can see. And um, I want to introduce you guys again, reintroduce everybody back to my channel. I know, um, like I said, I've taken a long break, so some of you guys have probably gone away, and I've probably got a lot of new subscribers now. So welcome back to all the ones who are returning, and hello to all the ones who have just come. Uh, so my channel is going to be about... Um, Traveling, of course, but it's mostly about information for the diaspora, for the pan Africanist community. Because I find that, you know, in my years of travel, few years of travel, I find uh, far few of my people out here, uh, especially like on places like the continent, uh, here in the motherland of Africa, um, I, I don't find too many of my people out here, you know, traveling. And for the most part, I believe in my mind, it's uh, because of a lack of information, you know, better information. And one thing I know about black people, uh, especially in America, is that we don't travel to certain places that we don't feel uns we don't feel safe, so to speak. So with that being said, you know, I'm doing my own little version of the Green Book, so to speak. For those of you who don't know what the Green Book is, the Green Book is a manual that uh, allows uh, people of color to travel in southern states, uh, back in the United States, uh, safely. You know, because we have had uh, issues in the past uh, finding safe places for us to travel, things of that nature. So... Uh, I'm trying to do a version of that here on the continent, you know what I'm saying? And I would like to see more of my people here one day, and when I say my people, I mean people in the diaspora who are returning back to uh, the motherland. Whether you feel like your people are indigenous here or not, I really believe that we have to establish some level of connection here in the motherland just based off of my experiences here uh, on the motherland over the last couple of years. And one thing I've noticed is that, you know, Outside of America, we have a major presence, but it's just that um, we're very uh, separated, so to speak. So my purpose is not necessarily to uh, close the gap of separation as far as bringing people here physically, but I'm trying to close the gap of separation and information. That's what I'm trying to do. So in the past, you know, I've tried to put out a lot of decent information about uh, Uganda in particular because it's a country that I plan to live in. It's a country I've been living in for uh, you know a while now. I was here the entire uh, lockdown for the coronavirus, and now I'm back again. So this country is a country I've taken my time to really get to know and really uh, understand how things work here. I'm not saying I'm an expert by by far. I don't believe I'm an expert at all, but I do believe that I have taken enough time to really learn how to finesse and, and maneuver within this country in a way that all people would be able to benefit, you understand? Because um, I have my ways of doing things that I realize that not everyone is willing to uh, live that type of lifestyle or, or, or 
do those type of things. So I cover a wide range of information as far as uh, you know living expenses, uh, travel expenses, uh, land buying, things of that nature, doing business, whether it's agribusiness or other types of business. You know, we, we I specialize in those things. I also connect with other individuals where we link up and we put our information together so that we can provide this information to the diaspora. So with that being said, you know, a lot of my channel, a lot of my um, information on this channel is definitely going to be geared more towards uh, those types of information as far as, you know, bringing more people from the diaspora to the continent and having you guys being in the right position that you wanted to be in the first place. Because I find that, you know, since I've been here, um, I've had to change my business plan multiple times because, you know, Uganda is not an easy country to live in. It's not an easy country to do business in as well. So that's something that you guys definitely want to pay attention to. And that's something you guys, um, as what I'm talking about, is something you guys are going to want to pay attention to. And something you guys are definitely going to remember when you come out here to the continent. So um, I'll talk a little bit about my experiences as far as uh, business is concerned. And then, you know, we're just going to get right into the content. This episode is actually not going to be that long of an episode. So you guys uh, stay tuned and, and listen out because I'm going to be dropping some jewels for you guys. I tend to not make my uh, episodes too long anyway. Most of my videos, especially live videos, are, are typically around 20 to 30 minutes because I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I try to drop, drop as much useful information uh, on my platform as often as possible and you know and enough of it so that you guys can get the general understanding of what's going on. So um, once again, you know, I'll get right into it uh, about some of the business things that you know happened while I was uh, here. And during the time, I just want everybody to understand one of the main reasons why my businesses were not as successful as I wanted them to be, the ones that I did try to get into, is because the time that I chose to come to Uganda was not a good time, unfortunately, because the entire world was experiencing a global pandemic as far as that coronavirus is concerned. So with that being said, I had a lot of hiccups uh, when I first came here doing business because of that particular situation. There's a lot of things I could not do because, you know, certain businesses were shut down, uh, movement weren't, wasn't allowed in certain places. And I'm going to talk about those things uh, because it's something that you guys need to be aware of. Being that we're in Uganda, you have to understand the rules and regulations of this country. You have to understand how things operate and how the president and how, you know, uh, the government operates, basically. And what can and happen and what cannot happen, basically. So, um... Like I was saying, one of the main reasons why you know my businesses didn't work out is because of the fact that I came at a poor time, and it was just you know it was just timing really. Um, I had a lot of issues uh, with communication in the beginning. Uh, I would say one thing, but something else would happen completely. Unfortunately, I do not have the uh, videos that uh, access to the videos because I lost a lot of my um, my SD cards uh, the last time I came back. Yeah, yeah, when I left in December, excuse me, when I left in December, I lost a lot of my SD cards, so I do not have access to that information, so I can, you know, give you guys good examples of as what happened in particular. So you just have to go based off of my word and what I'm saying. And um, communication is a big, big deal for me, and it's, it should be a big deal for anybody if you want to do business. But in Uganda, it's a really big deal, and you have to make sure that you get your point across, and you have to make sure you dot all your I's and cross your T's when you're trying to do business here in Uganda because the situation that I find is that there's a lot of miscommunication based off of uh, user experience, so to speak. So you have guys here in Uganda who are very experienced at doing certain things, but they do it in their way or their Ugandan way. And then we have experience doing certain things, but we are looking at it from a Western point of view. You have to understand when you come here to Uganda, education is different, everything is different. Not saying that one plus one doesn't equal two, you know what I'm saying? It does in Uganda, but what I'm saying is that for the most part, you have to understand that people think differently here, so the task at hand may be completed differently because of the mentality of the individuals that you hired for the job. So with that being said, individuals that I hired for the job did not, there are our uh, thoughts did not align the way I, I believe, them, believe that they did. So, um, a lot of situations that would occur was a lot of miscommunication, a lot of things just didn't get built or assembled the way that I wanted it to. So uh, unfortunately, it was money wasted because of that. You know, when you uh, try to get something built, like for example, I had some chairs and things built for my office space that I was renting at the time. Um, it was very brief because once lockdown began, I ended up uh, canceling all of that, but I could not get any of my money back 
because it was already deposited and it was already spent elsewhere. So that's a bigger thing, another thing that we're going to talk about as well. But um, when it came time to be getting certain things built and put into production so I can put it into my shop, uh, so to speak, plans did not come out the way that I uh, wanted them to. And it was because, you know, I took it straight from my imagination and I tried to explain it to this guy the best way I could. We came up with a diagram and a, a proper blueprint for how to build these certain things. But unfortunately, once the finished product was done, I was not at all happy with the finished product. So that's something that you guys need to keep in mind, you know what I'm saying, as far as what I said, dotting your I's across your T's. If you have a product that you want to be completed and you want it to be done by local Ugandans, you gotta understand that they do things the way that they know how to do them, not the way you know how to do it. So you have to really make sure you are literally micromanaging the entire thing. That's just how I conduct business. You might not wanna do that, you might wanna hire somebody else to do it for you, that's your business. But me personally, I'd rather be there on site, micromanaging the entire thing from start to finish. That way I can avoid a lot of the hiccups that I had in the first place. So um, that's my uh, way of moving forward. You know, I, at first, you know, it really bothered me when I couldn't get a lot of things done on time or it wasn't done the way I wanted it to be done. So it used to bother me a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I, I lost money. You know, it would probably bother anybody when you're out here losing money like that because you come on a fixed budget. I came on a fixed budget. so. You know, money is, is, time is money and money is time, you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't play around with certain things. I don't like to be jerked around and I don't like to be cheated out of my money, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't like to feel like I was cheated, you understand? Because that might not be the case where you was cheated, but it's just the feeling of being incomplete and not whole. So that's just my, my feelings of, of uh, when I was trying to get certain things done, I felt like I was being cheated out of uh, of what I actually wanted, you know what I'm saying, as far as the way they built it. So it just didn't go to you know to plan, and it was just a, a big problem. So like I said, you want to make sure you uh, cover all your bases when you're taking care of business like that to avoid those type of situations. You know, um, another thing is uh, time management. You know, some of these things I've actually covered in many videos before, but I'm, I'm reiterating it now because now it's more relevant than it was before because everything is open. The economy and everything is open now, so there's a lot of business that could be done here in Uganda. So I really want to reiterate, you know, time management is very key uh, as of right now, you know what I'm saying? Something that you guys definitely want to start, you know, paying attention to when you come out here is how people conduct business when they do time. You know what I'm saying? They tell you, oh, we're gonna meet up at like 1 p.m. to do something, or no, if they say we're gonna meet up midday, expect midday to be between the hours of 11 and 3 p.m. Or, or even 4 p.m. So that's just something I need to keep in mind. Also, traffic, because the economy is back open, everything is booming, everything is moving. Unfortunately, the roads are just as congested as they were before, if not worse, you understand. So time management is gonna be very, very pivotal for a lot of you guys when you're trying to do uh, uh, certain types of business here in Uganda. You know, it's something that you guys definitely wanna uh, take care of ahead of time. Whether it's you providing your own transportation, make sure you got somebody reliable, to provide transportation for you, or um, the individuals who you're supposed to be meeting up with, you're meeting up in a location where people are aware where that location is, you're meeting up uh, on a road that's maybe not so busy in a town, a part of town that's not so busy, you understand? I know if I wanna do certain kinds of business, I'm not gonna tell people to meet me um, in areas like Kisimenti or, or areas like uh, uh, um, parts of Muyenga, Kabbalagala, that area, like where I'm staying now, because the roads can be quite congested and if people are moving by a car, you know, you know, it might take a little longer to get to you versus if they're moving by a boda boda, which is a motorcycle. So that's just something that you guys want to keep in mind when you come here. You know, time management is very key, but it also depends on location and the type of tr uh, transportation that you are either providing or the person is utilizing. So that's something that you guys want to pr really, really keep in your mind. That's, that should be like in your top five things as far as priorities go when you're trying to conduct certain types of business out here. Another thing that you guys want to definitely conduct, uh, keep in mind when you're conducting business is money. Nothing moves out here in Uganda without money, you understand. People are going to ask you about transport. If you don't understand what that means, they're basically asking you to provide uh, fuel for their vehicle or provide uh, money to cover their Uber or their taxi, something of that nature. So if someone asks you about transport, that's what they're talking about. So that's something that you guys need to understand. I'm gonna cover another video with a local Ugandan so we can talk about lingo here in Uganda because yes, Uganda is an English speaking country. They have their own version of uh, English, not like Nigerian pidgin or anything like that. 
It's just that they have an interesting way of, of talking or, or speaking out here when they when they talk in English. So that's you know something that you guys are definitely gonna want to pay attention to. I'm gonna actually do that in my next video. So um, you guys are gonna want to watch that video definitely because there's a lot of lingo out here. You're gonna need to get hit to. You know what I'm saying as far as directions go, money, uh, uh, just having a general conversation. You know what I'm saying. Uh, Trying to figure out somebody's talking badly about you, some you know things of that nature. You know, so I'm going to cover a lot of things as far as lingo is concerned, or language, English language. I'm going to cover those things uh, as far as that's concerned. But uh, back to what I was saying, you got you guys got to understand. You know, lingo is a little bit different here. So uh, I had a, you know a few issues with communication, uh, but you know, once I got those things uh, sorted out and I, um, I have a general understanding of, of what I'm what I got going on. You know, I don't really have that issue anymore, but I definitely want to make sure that I understand the lingo here because, you know, when it came to transportation and providing transportation, money for transportation, I did not understand why people kept saying, but you forgot my transport. They'll say that, hey, but you forgot my transport. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Do you need a ride somewhere? You know what I'm saying? Do you want me to call a car or call a cab for you? But no, it basically means that um, you got to pay them for transportation. You understand? So I make sure that when I'm having this conversation with somebody, I cover that in the beginning. That's one of the first things I talk about where I cover early, early, early in the beginning. You understand? I, I make sure of that because I've had those issues before where I don't bring, I don't carry a lot of cash with me. So I usually typically have my cards and stuff like that with me because I can go to ATMs, things of that nature. And um, sometimes guys will ask me like, hey, yeah, I, I met you at this place, but you forgot my transport. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically, like I said, they're just asking for money for, for a few. So just keep that in mind, all right? First things first, don't move around with a lot of cash, especially if you're doing business deals and you've made arrangements to make payments at certain times. You don't want to move with a lot of cash. If, 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 if you can avoid it, go ahead and avoid that. You understand? I always do things like um, certain types of business that I conduct. I'll go ahead and make uh, half of a payment now and then the rest later, you know what I'm saying? I'll either pay half now and then come back tomorrow or I'll send mobile money, something like that. I never bring large amounts of cash with me uh, at all, period. Because I've had a situation where I got robbed once uh, here, but not by doing business. I was just being careless. I had money, you know, those little uh, wallets with your phone. You have your cell phone on one side, cards and debit cards, uh, IDs on the other side. And it has a, a space for cash. So I had one of those kind of phone cases and um, my phone got stolen. So I had all my money information and all, all my money stuff with it basically so I was out back so that's just something that y'all want to keep in mind you know don't carry a whole lot of cash with you if you can avoid it also uh, like I said you know make payments on certain things it's 100% it's allowed out here uh, you just let them know if, if you can communicate once again communication if you can communicate with the individual that you're doing business with and you let it be known hey look I don't feel comfortable walking around with that much cash can we do this this and this or can we handle it half this and half that you know, a lot of times they'll be very understanding and they can make that happen. But it all goes down to you communicating. If you do not communicate properly, then they will expect all of it at one time or something of that nature. You understand? So I, I just completely avoid all of that. All right. So uh, money, money, just, you know, safety and security, just be safe. You know, especially if you're moving by boda boda or, or car. If you're, if you're conducting certain kinds of business and you're doing money business, don't move by boda boda. boda. I do not recommend that, especially if that boat is saw you put that money somewhere. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Don't put yourself in that position, uh, position or situation. And don't set yourself up for failure. All right. You want to set yourself up for success. So go ahead and get you a private car. Get you an Uber. Uh, they have apps for these things now. Bolt, B O L T, uh, Uber, Safe Boda. You know what I'm saying? All of these different things, methods for transportation, so where you can be safe, moving from point A to point B to point C, something of that nature. All right. So, once again, safety and security, don't move a large amount of cash, keep cards with you, make payments, something of that nature, all right? Um, hmm, outside of that, I think I covered quite a few things, um, not too, too much. I'm going to um, cover some more things in another version of this episode of part two where I'm going to talk more about the lingo. And I'm going to have a, a local person uh, also help me explain a lot of these things too because a lot of things that I would talk about Sometimes it's not really that necessary, but because I'm prior military and I move a certain type of way, that's just how I handle things. I go the extra mile for safety and security because of what happened to me in my past. So uh, once again, I'm going to have a local person with me, a uh, local Ugandan, 
who can uh, also teach you proper things, uh, methods of uh, safety security transportation, uh, communication, and proper ways of conducting business here in Uganda. For those of you who are uh, traveling, you know, for leisure and for pleasure, uh, please stay tuned for some of these episodes coming up because I'm definitely going to talk about those things uh, moving around here in Kampala. I'm going to have some people who are seasoned veterans of moving around in, in, in Kampala uh, who are going to help me explain these things as well. So you guys look out for that information and um, yeah, stay tuned for every episode. I'll try to upload at least two or three episodes per week depending on uh, internet services um, because I've been moving around I got to rely on certain types of internet services right now so I'll do the best I can at uploading information so just bear with me if you cannot catch an uploaded video stay tuned for the live videos because I put a lot of information out on my live videos okay that's one thing y'all gonna know about me I might have talked a little bit too fast for y'all I do apologize I got a lot of energy in me right now because I'm just so happy being here in Uganda I've been waiting to be back in Uganda for so long, so I'm just really, really happy. But as I was saying, uh, you guys definitely want to stay tuned for those live episodes because those live episodes, I'm going to be putting a lot of information out for you guys uh, so you guys can see what's happening. Because uh, a lot of my uploaded stuff, I'm trying to um, save a lot of space for my docu-series that I got going on. It's a little 15-minute 15, uh, 15 episodes uh, docu-series that I got going on uh, pretty soon. So you guys, you know, stay tuned for that content. Um, I hope you guys like the quality of this uh, video as well, the audio and the uh, video quality of this uh, episode because I'm using a, a brand new camera, uh, two new cameras actually. I have my cell phone, my uh, Galaxy S22. I'm using that one which has an 8K camera, 8K uh, video recording camera. And then I'm using my uh, Panasonic Lumix uh, G9 which also has the same quality uh, video. So right now I'm probably shooting in 4K. Um, this is a mirrorless camera as well, so it's lightweight. It's good for me to move around with. Um, pretty safe, secure, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm on right now. That's what I've been doing. Uh, I actually saw this camera. I think um, uh, SPK Lifestyle was using this camera. I know O'Shea definitely was using one of these cameras, so I was like, man, I gotta upgrade and give me something else because I was just filming everything with my cell phone back then. Yeah, it was 4K, but you know, I, your boy needed to upgrade basically. So I've been waiting to upgrade for quite some time and I finally got it done. You know what I'm saying? I, I put my money away. I did what I had to do. Went back to the US, worked. I did what I had to do so I could come back strong. You know what I'm saying? I got other things I'm trying to do. You know, so I'm back. For those of you who thought I wasn't coming back, I'm back. All right. <laughs> I'm definitely back uh, in Camp Palm. So again, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. If you're new to my channel, uh, feel free to subscribe now. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like this episode. Uh, if you have any uh, questions about this episode, feel free to leave me a comment. I try to answer uh, most comments uh, as quickly as possible. There are some comments that are not related to my content, so I don't provide uh, you know, information on that. So if, they, if you ask a question and I didn't answer, it's probably one of those reasons why. Um, for the most part, if you do not feel comfortable leaving me a comment for your question, you can always hit me up on my email or you can DM me, DM me on my Instagram. My email is kingobatunda, it's actually going to be posted right here, kingobatunda at gmail.com, K-I-N-G-O-B-U-T-U-N-D-A at gmail.com. And then for my Instagram, you can always hit me up on Instagram at kingobatunda, no space, just at kingobatunda. And then uh, you'll, follow, you'll find me on Instagram. Also, I'm going to start doing a little bit more things on TikTok as well. Uploading some uh, quick videos. I was going to be doing my drone stuff. Unfortunately, I, my drone got confiscated at the airport. So for those of you who are bringing drones into the country, just know they're going to keep your stuff at the airport. I got to go to some defense person and get a letter. I, I'm not doing that. So... Unfortunately, I'm not gonna have no drone shots for this uh, trip here. I'm actually, you no, know I might, I might, I might, I might, because I forgot. Excuse me. I got, I got a buddy of mine um, who I can rent a drone from, so I can show you guys some uh, really, really great content coming up. So you guys, you know, stay tuned for that. If possible, I'm gonna try to add some drone shots. You know what I'm saying? So you know, check that out on my TikTok, which is King underscore Obatunda, K I N G underscore. O-B-U to U-N-D-A. Alright, so I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. I hope everybody enjoys the content that I am providing and will provide. And you guys have a blessed and wonderful day. 
I appreciate everybody, all my subscribers uh, for tuning in. I appreciate all my subscribers for staying in tune and, you know, uh, just give me some time to work my own personal things out because I had a lot of personal problems when I came back uh, to the United States in December. So, you guys, y'all have a blessed, wonderful day. I'll holler at y'all later. All right? Peace!